Okay, further now we have a combination of compound and simple interest. We did compound interest problems, we did simple interest, and I'm sure there is some degree of understanding regarding the difference between the two. Simple interest, once again, I reiterate, has a fixed principle during the entire period, and the interest also remains the same. With compound interest, the principle at the end of every year changes and the interest also changes. This is because of the concept of accrued interest, that is interest gets added to the principal at the end of every year, hence the concept of interest on interest. But always note that for the first year, compound interest and simple interest would remain the same provided, provi provided the principal and rate remain same. Now let's do, we have done all the concept, I'm sure you should be at least 95% thorough with the usage of the formula. Now to cover up all the few loopholes which you could uh, which are possible when you take these concepts separately to cover those loopholes we will do a little bit of twist and turn and combine concepts of compound and simple interest okay so let's take this first example if the simple interest on a sum of money at 12 percent per annum for two years is rupees 3600 the compound interest on the same sum for two years at the same rate is what? So first we need to find out is P. So we have simple interest that is 3600 is equal to PIT. P into I is 0 0.12 for two years into two. So P would be what? It is 3600 upon 0. Point to 4. So we have 3600 divided by 2 point, 0 0.24. This turns out to be 15,000. So it's going to be 15,000 is the principal. Okay. Now on the same sum, so the component interest on the same sum is going to be into 1 plus r raised to n minus 1 is the compound interest which will turn out to be 15,000 into rate is going to be 12 percent so 1.12 raised to 2 minus 1 and is going to be 2 so let's see 1.12 into itself minus 1 into 15 thousand which is three thousand eight hundred and sixteen so what has been done is the first set of information has been given to find the value of p subsequent to that we find the value of the compound interest for the same principle and same rate of interest okay so we do have it as three thousand eight hundred and sixteen Okay, now we have difference between simple interest and compound interest on rupees 2400 for two years at 5% per annum is what? So we'll have simple interest, we quickly jot down the formula, is PRT, so which is going to be P is 2400 into R is 0 0.05 into 2, which will turn out to be 0 0.1, so 240 is the simple interest. Compound interest is P, that is 2400, into 1 plus R raised to N, that is 1.05 raised to 2 minus 1. So we have 1.05 into itself 1. Two forty six, so we have two forty six. So compound interest minus simple interest turns out to be two forty six minus six, which is two forty six minus two forty, which is rupees six. The same thing if you had done it for one year, you would have found that both simple interest and compound interest would have been the same. So you have compound interest minus simple interest is rupees six. Yes, we do have it as 6. Okay. The difference between simple and compound interest on a certain sum for 3 years at 5% per annum is 228.75. The compound interest on the same sum for 2 years 
at 5% for random as well. So first attempt effort is going to be calculate the principal. So difference between simple and compound. So it has to be always compound minus simple because compound interest will always be more. So it's going to be P into 1.05 raised to or a certain sum per annum raised to n minus 1 raised to 3 minus 1 minus PIT. P is not known. I is 0 0.05 into T 3 into 3 is equal to 228.75. So, let's see what we have, we need to find out P for that, so we have 1.05 into 5, 5. minus 1, so we get 0.157625p minus 0.15p is 228.75 which will turn out to be 8. So it turns out to be we have one five seven six two point two turns out to be P turns out to be roughly around Three thousand turns out to be around three thousand. So this on calculation turns out to be two twenty eight point seven five divided by zero point zero zero seven six two five. It turns out to be thirty thousand, which works out to be thirty thousand. So the principal is going to be thirty thousand. After that. You have been asked to find the compound interest on the same sum for two years at 5%. So it's going to be the same formula P into 1.05 square minus 1. So that is 30,000 into 1.05 square. 1.05 into itself minus 1 into 30. Turns out to be one point roughly around three thousand and seventy five. So it turns out to be three thousand and seventy five. So first set of information is meant to calculate the principal using the same principle, calculate the compound interest. So three thousand seventy five, and yes, we do get it right. Okay. Then similarly, difference between compound and simple interest at 5% per annum for 4 years on rupees 20,000 is so and so. So again, it's going to be P into 1 plus R raised to N minus 1 is the compound interest minus PRT has been asked to find out. So it's going to be 20,000 into 1 plus r by 100 that is 1.05 raised to 4 minus 1 minus 20,000 into 0 0.05 into 4 you've been asked to calculate this so it's going to be into so it's going to be minus 1 
returns are this one turns out to be 4310.125. Then you have into zero point zero five turns out to be around three hundred and this turns out to be around this is roughly around four thousand rupees looks out to be four thousand so the difference turns out to be around three hundred and ten rupees thirteen paise the closest among these is of course three hundred and ten so hence you get the difference that way so among these 310 is the answer for the moving and here you have difference between compound interest and simple interest on a certain sum of money invested for three years at six percent per annum is rupees 110.16 the sum is what so difference between compound interest on a certain sum of money so it's going to be b into for 6 here 1.06 raised to 3 minus 1 minus p r t turns out to be 110.16 so we need to calculate this so r of course is 0 0.06 into t is 3 so it's going to be this is going to be 0 0.18 p and 1.06 into this has twice twice minus 1 and this will be 0 0.1910 016 p minus 0.18 hmm. this is taken manually and you get roughly around P turns out to be around 10,000. So P turns out to be around 10,000 roughly. So yes, we will get it as 10,000. Okay. Okay. So what do we have here? Mr. X invests P amount at simple interest rate 10% and Mr. Y invests Q amount at compound interest rate 5% compound annually. At the end of two years, both get the same amount of interest. Then the relation between two amounts P and Q is given by what? So P amount at simple interest 10% and both for two years. So X is invested X for X is going to be P into 0 0.1 into 2. This is the simple interest for X. And for y, it's going to be p into 1.05 squared minus 1. Right? 1.45%. 1 so, compounded annually this. So, it's going to be 1.05 into 1.05. This turns out to be 0 0.1025. For his principal, this turns out to be Q. I'm sorry, so it's into so much Q. And this is going to be 0.2P. And both these are equal. So that means P is going to be 0.1025Q upon 0 0.2 which is going to be 1025 q 
two upon two thousand. It will cancel by twenty five. We get it as forty one Q, and we can divide it in denominator by twenty five, and we get a P. So that means P is equal to forty one Q by a T. So it's going to be among these this option P is equal to forty one Q by a T. You just have to translate it in the form of the equation. Both the interests are equal. The principles are P and Q. Although the interests are same, the principles are different, the rates are different, but the net interest is same. Using them, we can find the relation between P and Q. So the first option is what we need to get. Yes, that's what we got. Now here we have the SI <coughs> on a sum of money is 4 by 9 times of the principal. And the number of years is equal to the rate of interest per annum. Find the rate of interest per annum. Now see SI in this case is equal to 4P upon 9. Number of years that is T is equal to R as a percentage. For example, the rate has been given as 14%. So you're going to number of the T you as in terms of percentage. So T would be 14 years. So but R has to be taken as R by 100 in this case. So SI would be taken as PRT. Now in such cases, if you're going to take this as 4P by 9, this will become P. Now if you're going to take T as R, then this R has to be written as R by 100 because the rate has not, the number of years is equal to the rate of interest which means the rate of interest in terms of percentage hence you get it this way so p would be taken as not r by 100 but r and r would be taken as whatever is the rate in percentage hence you have to convert it to 100 so p gets cancelled hence you get r square is 400 by 9 hence r is equal to 20 by 3 years so which is 6.67 or something. So we have 20 by 3% is the right answer.